So that's why if I go ahead and start, Chris caught most of this, but we started last class and we started talking about <clears throat> um, John 10. <clears throat> and in John 10, we heard Jesus mention that um, he has come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. <clears throat> and there's so many different definitions of the abundant life and what that means and how, how that's applied and everything. <clears throat> so we wanted to go through, we wanted to take a closer look at that and, and uh, to determine, I guess first, what is our definition of that? And then second of all, um, what is, um, uh, what is God's definition of it since Jesus is the one who said it so his definition would be the most important thing <clears throat> and you know we discussed the fact that uh, you know we talk about our life being made better or improved or, or you know protected or preserved or touched in some way from you know from the Lord giving direction and giving protection and and these sort of things, is that the abundant life? Or did it, did it apply to um, protection and uh, direction all in relationship to supernatural things? <clears throat> and then we went to the book of Acts chapter nine and we saw uh, Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus before he was converted, we saw what he was like. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in Acts chapter 9, and Chris, I'm just rehearsing, so you haven't missed anything. Uh, and <clears throat> we mentioned in Acts chapter 9, so I'll just read those scriptures again so that you can see um, what his life in the flesh was before the Lord. <clears throat> and verse, starting with verse 1 says, And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter, Threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? <coughs> And the, and the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And so begins um, uh, Paul's introduction to life. That's, that's the best way I can say it. This is the very early stages of Paul's introduction to life and to what the abundant life is. <clears throat> and... So what we did, and this is what we ended with, was this scripture uh, in Ephesians. And so you can turn there if you want to. It's Ephesians 4.29. And um, we <clears throat> began to see that this is Paul many years later after he has grown in the Lord, after he has walked with the Lord, after he has um, served the Lord. And it says in uh, Ephesians 4, starting with verse 29, and this is him speaking to the church at Ephesus. <clears throat> let no communication, not, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Okay, so, so you begin to hear a completely different use of his of, of his vocal cords, they're controlled now by another life. You know, I mean, that's, that's a pretty amazing thing because he was breathing out threatenings and slaughter and everything was against, against. He was doing this against. <clears throat> and here he speaks to those that he has influence and he says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Let what does come out of your mouth, build up the people that you're talking to. Okay. So <clears throat> let's face it. There is that use which we can use of our mouth to tear down others so that we look better or to use our mouth to edify ourselves. In other words, to build up and make ourselves look 
you know, good. Um, and, you know, somebody, some people would say, well, you know, that's a good thing. <clears throat> but I th my opinion is that if you have the life of Christ, then you let that speak to people. And if people can't, if they cannot discern him, if they cannot see him, if they see something different than what is really there, put that in the hands of the Lord. Don't try to convince everybody that you're a saint and you're a really special person. Just live Christ and let that speak. And because, I mean, look at Jesus. I mean, we're talking about the very son of God. He walked around and he, while he was on this earth and he shared and, <clears throat> and, and it says after he shared, some believed and some didn't. Well, you can't get any better communication or better, you know, uh, more um, selfless communication and more selfless way of living than the Son of God himself. So, you know, this thing of I have to impress everybody, I have, everybody has to, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I, I want my testimony to speak for me. And your testimony is that you do the things that make them like you. Okay, well, no, 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 no. Your testimony is how much Christ was lived, how much you, you were given unto uh, sacrifice, as it were, and, and to selflessness, rather than how much you tried to, can I use the word, self-promote? You know, self-promote. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's funny that Jesus didn't really walk around going, look, I'm the son of God. Y'all need to listen. You know, I'm really of God now, and, you know, I'm not lying. Watch me do this miracle. You know, I mean, he could have done that. Every time someone doubted, he could have, you know, just walked up to the doubters and said, you know, bring your mother here and heal, heal her. And then he goes, oh. <clears throat> but the proof that he is the son of God is not in relationship to miracles or what he can do. The proof is his nature. And his nature may require you to get low instead of lift yourself higher. Can I get amen on that one? All right. That it may minister grace to the hearers. <clears throat> Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And <clears throat> so he's, so what, one of the things we're doing is we're contrasting him before life and after life or life by Christ, life by the nature of Christ. And before he was cruel and mean and da 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 da, but he, he wasn't. He wasn't looked at as cruel and mean by the religious leaders and by the religion that he was uh, involved with. He was looked at as a zealot, as a person who was hard after God and willing to, to deal with that which was um, <clears throat> not true. And, and it's true that Jesus was not true. He's the truth. He's not just true. He is the way and the truth and the life. And that's, that's who we need to be introduced to as life. See, that's the life he's describing to us. Jesus is describing life to us. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the life is not true it is the truth. And the life is not just a way. It is the way. And it's a little person, and it's Jesus when he says, I am that. Okay. So, <clears throat> verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And so here again, um, we saw this uh, contrast of bitterness <clears throat> I mean, if you just if you just looked at bitterness, you can see that that um, the life, the life, the abundant life, doesn't walk around bitter over everything. Jesus didn't walk around bitter over everything. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, you can disagree with something and not be bitter, right? You know, I've often said we can have differences without division. Okay, well, how do we have differences without division? Well, that's simple. Paul addressed that in Corinthians. He says, is Christ divided? 
that's the deal. If, we, if it is the life, if it is Christ, the life, if, if he is, see, he, I am come that you might have life. He didn't say I'm come to give you abundant life. He said I am come that they might have. Right? In his coming, they have it. <clears throat> but we're looking for Jesus to, you know, give a, you know, a magic sprinkle of something heavenly on us and go, oh. I have the life, I have the glory, I have the nature. I, no, you don't. No, you're much of, much of our uh, ways that are Christian are not necessarily Christ. They are us looking good to other Christians. They are us doing our best to be the things that we think God wants and fretting over the things that, that are not that and wondering why, you know, there's this battle that goes still going on. <clears throat> well, I think John the Baptist nailed it. He must increase. He must. And I must decrease. And so, um, uh, but, but to realize what that means means that this slain lamb, this slaughtered lamb that was slaughtered. <clears throat> Just as Paul breathed out slaughterings, there were those that were, in, that were the religious high priest and the priests and the Pharisees and uh, that they had him slaughtered. And that's why he's called, a, on, in the book of Revelation, the actual translation is a slaughtered lamb, not just a slain lamb, you know, well, there was a slain lamb, but he was slaughtered by those who violently took his life away to cover themselves and to look better because they felt like there was competition going on. So, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. <clears throat> you know, one of the things I was praying on the way here um, just praying for the gathering and, and the, what the Lord wants to say or do. And um, I started to pray, Lord, just open our eyes and open our hearts more to your son. And I had to go back to something that I really have not enjoyed praying. Um, but it was, Lord, help us, Father, help us through the Holy Spirit to want the slaughtered lamb as our life. To want that, to really pursue and say, that's what I want. That's what I love. That's what I want. And what came up again <clears throat> uh, to me was the thing that I always felt bad about because, you know, it would be like talking to Jesus and saying, Lord, help me to want you. Or it would be like a, a boyfriend and girlfriend and one of them say, help me to like you. You know, asking her or him, you know, help me to like you. And you'd go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joseph said, here's some money. <laughs> or, or whatever. <laughs> That's great. So, you know, it's, it's like an insult. You know, well, you, so you don't like me or, you know, I'm having to help you to like me or whatever and it's always bugged me to pray that but tonight when I was driving here I felt the spirit move in a little different way <clears throat> and he he did say I mean I I would I still feel bad if I have to pray that okay but <clears throat> he said um, that it takes the Holy Spirit to convert us because we do not normally want the Lord when, until we're born again, you know, and that we can't take any glory. We're saved by grace and we're called by grace and we're moved on by grace and prevenient grace and all, all those things are at work. <clears throat> and, um, and if that's what it takes, more of the Spirit of God released by the Father to, to get us to want that slaughtered lamb, uh, because, I mean, you, you do see in chapter 5 of the book of Revelation, there's a whole lot of people up there worshiping 
that. It's clear to them that that's a slaughtered lamb on the throne. You understand what I'm saying? It's not, you know, I've often said, it's not Jesus sitting there with these beautiful robes and, you know, looking like this kingly thing and going, yes, and, a, you know, this victorious thing of going, yes, uh, you know, I have died for you and da-da-da-da, but rather I am, he still bears the image. Remember at the very beginning, the book of Revelation, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Remember in the very beginning of the book of Revelation when God speaks in relationship to us, he speaks a desire that is on his heart. It is a desire of his heart and he doesn't mention anything else. He wants his image in us. And I hear that. I hear when I read the the book of Genesis there, and he says that let us, let Father and let Son and let Holy Spirit, let us, not let me, the one, you know, let us make man in our image and let's, you know, uh, <clears throat> expressing something that they hoped for from before we were even created that was in their hearts for us. So, Lord, make us in your image and make us love that image. Make us want that image uh, because uh, <clears throat> that image, okay, so let's, let's qualify that a little better. That image is the nature of the person, okay? That image is the nature of the person. So when you say, I want that image, you're saying, I want the nature of that person to fill every part of this temple because that's what we're supposed to be, the temple of God, the real temple, not the Old Testament temple, not, the old, not all of the types and shadows. We are the real. So I can say, I, if I don't want that image, I want to want that image. I want, in other words, I want you formed in me in this way. And I want to love that image because I want to love that person. And I don't want to just love him because he died to save my rear from hell. Yes, that's, that's in there. Of course it is. But they, you know, when they were speaking in Revelation 5, they were speaking, you know, of him who died, the one who died. Worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered. Worthy is the lamb who is not worthy is the, the guy who, who defeated all enemies and rose up and is now king and glorious and all that stuff. That's not what they're saying. And that's, folks, that's heavenly worship. Think about it compared to earthly worship. Think about it. Think about what we worship. Think about how we worship him. Are we worshiping him in spirit and in truth? You know? Because, you know, Jesus said that one time, remember? That we desire to be worshiped in spirit and in truth. And in that spirit. And, and, and one with that spirit. <clears throat> and so... And that's where Revelation 5 has that. But as you move through the chapters, as you make your way through, then you get to, what is it, 14, where they follow the lamb, where the show he goes. Now you've got a, now you've got a big group following the lamb wherever so he goes. They're going, lamb goes here. Randy would go here. But I'm following this. I'm after this. I'm pursuing this. I'm saying... I'm, I'm standing at a crossroad. Lamb is going that way. Randy wants to go this way. I choose you above my preferences. I choose you. I want you. Okay. Well, that begins to work in you. But again, there is, there's, not, there's no way that's going to happen with that 
in us without the Holy Spirit moving upon us and us saying to the Holy Spirit, you are the one Jesus said he was going to send you that I might really, really, really know him. I, Jesus said, I have so much to tell you, so much more to say, but I, you can't bear it right now because you've already got fixed, you know, and what is it they couldn't bear? They're looking at Jesus and they're going, you're going to be, you're going to take over this whole country and you're going to be the king and you're going to raise up the kingdom of God and this is all going to be glorious and everything. And so when they grabbed him to kill him, they're all going, what are you doing? This is wrong. And he's going, this is not wrong. This is why I came. This is who I am. This is what I do. This is where I go. And this is what's going to be in you. This will be what is in you. Okay, so all we see in the early going, of course, of course and of course, all we see in the early going is, well, but what does that mean to my future? <laughs> what does that mean to my future? Well, it means death, you know, it means the cross, you know, it does. But it means life too, his life, his life. And so we see Paul beginning to be transformed, literal transformation from, from brute beast that is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take his words here as something that probably worked in him, bitterness and wrath and anger. I mean, you know, breathing, breathing out, you know, slaughter and, and um, what was the other word? Threatenings. Sounds pretty angry to me. <laughs> I'm just guessing. And there might even be bitterness in there because well, what are y'all doing? You know, this is, you're violating God. So, so here's how they violate God. They let him take them and go imprison them or do whatever happens to them. You know, just, just so, you, you need to check this out. For the most part, from everything I can tell from what I've read over the years and stuff, I had never during that time period from where Jesus died till, you know, history as we know it, where there was a Christian rebellion. <laughs> you know, that they all rose up and went, no! We'll fight you now. I know that there are, yes, but I'm talking about the real thing. I'm talking about, for the most part, like, for example, um, the Romans, and when they had the, um, what's it called? With the big thing and the lions would come, the Colosseum and, the, <clears throat> and um, uh, you know, they would be thrown to the lions and it would be to the enjoyment of the Romans. And you hear nothing of a rebellion going on. You hear nothing of it. And I'm going to assume because Jesus doesn't declare himself, and if Jesus was in them, I'm going to assume that they were not murdered, that they became sacrifices unto the Lord. And it was a sweet savor to the Father to receive his son, you know, without all this, you know, clamor and murder, why is this? And, why, and I'm, you know, angry about that. I'm bitter over this and all this stuff. Every ounce of that, is not the abundant life. It's not him who came to be the life. It is, it, it could well be Christian Christianity, you know, it could be. It could be Christianity, but not Christ. And if we're leaving Christ out of Christianity, as I've said, often said, what do we get? Anity, you know, but not Christ. We're leaving him out. So, <clears throat> So then he, he, he reverses it. He says, he says uh, I love the wording of this because this is a man who went through all of this, see? This, is, this isn't counseling. <laughs> this is Christ to him, okay? And, and so he says, put away this. Put away, put it away. Put away that bitterness. Put away that anger. Put away all that stuff, that evil speaking. Uh, and then he says, and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Okay, so there is, there begins to be not just a contrast of, well, I was breathing out slaughterings and I don't want to do that anymore. 
Instead, it is, I want the abundant life. I want the, right, the true life. I want him who is the life, not just the life giver. I give you life. Oh, you know, now I have, you know, a Christian life. There is no other life that we received except Christ. There's no, there's no Christian life <laughs> that we understand. Well, what, you know, what are you doing for God? Well, I'm just living the Christian life. And you're going, well, you need to stop that and start living Christ, you know. <laughs> you need to quit putting your emphasis on a religion and make him the focal point of your heart and to press in to him. So kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. And even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you, well, you know, God and the Father, they saw, you know, God saw everything that was done to Jesus. He saw the false witnesses intentionally brought in. They, in other words, they didn't just happen along and go, well, you know, I, you know, they said, go find us some false witnesses. Find us some people that will speak against him. Find us this and that that will, will make, put him in a bad light. Do everything that we can. <clears throat> and, and the Father, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Because Jesus said, Father, forgive them. I mean, that's not us. That's not our nature. That's not us. So do it in the same manner that the Father forgave you for Christ's sake. For in the midst of all that you did and all that you turned and twisted things to make you look better, make him look worse, and all you did to, to, to go out of your way to find people to da 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 and all you did, forgive like that. I forgive it. So, so we, what we see <clears throat> is Saul of Tarsus, and then we see him meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus, but now we see something radically different, which we also last class began with Galatians 2.20. Radically different. So, and, and drastically different from him. So, the idea would be, Paul, what, what, did, what is your explanation of the abundant life when you were this way, and now you are this way? What does it mean? What is, what is your explanation of that? You know, and of course, we kind of use this little phrase, uh, last time, I'm living a different life than I used to. You know, Paul could say, well, I'm living a different life than I used to. Y'all remember my see it? I said that last class. Uh, Paul would say to him, I'm living a different life than I used to. And, of course, <clears throat> we would go, well, so am I because I'm Christian now. I'm not, I'm not hanging out at the bars or doing this and that or whatever. I'm, I'm living a different life. And then, but, but let me not jump to any conclusions, Paul. What do you mean by that? What is your meaning? In other words, ask him what he means instead of us putting our experience or our understanding on his words. So that's where we go to Galatians 2.20, if you'll turn there with me. Most of you know it, so you don't have to turn there. <clears throat> but just in case. Verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by, come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. All right, so, so basically he's saying the abundant life or the life that I live or, and he literally says it, the life I now live in the flesh. Okay, so we'll, we'll get into that, maybe not fully tonight, but <clears throat> he's talking about 
the life that he lives in the flesh is not I, but Christ. Not I, but Christ. Um, <clears throat> and as I've said, you know, most everyone claims that he's their life, you know. Um, well, he's the life of every believer. Well, he may have been given as the life of every believer, but not every believer has embraced the second part of this. It says, or the first part and through, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I yet live, yet not I, Christ liveth in me. They've just embraced that Jesus gave me new life. And that new life isn't necessarily in everyone's mind defined as Christ himself in a spe specific way. And that specific way we're talking about is slaughtered lamb. It's just that, you know, I have the victorious Christ now. And, um, and, he, and he is victorious, but through death. He's, his victory wasn't through strength. His victory wasn't through overcoming everybody. Uh, and the scriptures, that, like the book of Revelation, is full of he that overcometh. But every time, if you'll check the context of that, that's talking about overcoming by giving yourself, by, through death or through sacrifice or whatever. Um, not by going, well, I'll just, I'll rise up. I'll get stronger and better and faster. And wait a minute, that's a $6 million man. Anyway, um, you know, trying to, to become um, something above, um, something above the, what we were so that we can feel better about ourselves. And, and I know what that's like because uh, I had three brothers and two sisters and we were pretty poor and all that kind of stuff and growing up was, was rough. Both parents were alcoholics and all this kind of stuff. And, <clears throat> and so during all that time, believe it or not, I was the black sheep of the family. Most of you probably believe that. I was the black sheep of the family, okay? And, you know, I was the one who got in trouble with the law, and I was the one who did drugs, and I was the one who did everything I shouldn't do. And so when I got saved, I was so happy because now I was going to be something special. You know, I was not, I was, I would no longer be bad. I would be good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I thought my family was going to just love that. You were the black sheep, and now you're the whitest of all. You know, and I know, <laughs> you know, I really thought that. I thought, this is it. You know, I'm finally dug myself out of this hole and whatever. And so I'm going to be so, um, <clears throat> you know, received and everything. Well, I found out that that wasn't the case. I became the black sheep of the, you know, whatever. And, um, Eventually, the Lord changed things, but that change came as I began to conform to the image of the Lamb. I quit being a lion trying to push everything on everybody to make them believe what I believe. I got low. I got real low. I dropped. I was like, Aah! I dropped because I knew what I had been doing wrong after a while. I realized, you know. I mean, at first, I was bitter and angry and <laughs> wrath and all that because they weren't receiving me and I knew I had the Lord and therefore I have the Lord. I have the Lord for God's sake. I have the Lord, you know. <clears throat> and so why aren't y'all, you know, making a big deal out of this instead of being worse literally towards me than you were before? Um, and then I realized because there was a too much of me in it and it was too much about me and it was about what Jesus did for me and it was about this and that and it was just driving him away and so I just <clears throat> you know I just like I said I just dropped out I, I, I just quit trying to impress or even share and I said father if you want me to share you open the door which he did and I ultimately I ended up being the one who led all my family members to the Lord, all of them, <laughs> including my mom and stepfather. Yeah. The thing about how you know Paul would, how he preached the message. It was never, you have to believe this. You know, like shaking his little shoulders. Come on, believe. He would just go there, declare what he knew to be true, regardless of who he happened to be. 
That's right. The book of Revelation is full of that too, isn't it? He that hath an ear, let him hear. <clears throat> um, so, <clears throat> so what we're doing in, in this class at, uh, through this portion, not just tonight, but uh, is we're looking at the believer's crucifixion. And we're working our way through uh, the scriptures to really understand that not in some sort of a aesthetic uh, way or some sort of um, way of um, being beat down or or nothing or I don't I don't even know how to describe it. It's none of that. It is about Christ being able to live his life in us, through us, by his spirit and nature. That's what it's about. It's about him. It's not about, you know, but, but let's face it. Our reactions and our things, all this stuff that's in us that is not Christ is still us. It's still us. And the abundant life is maybe very small in us at this stage or whatever. It needs to be, you know, again, an increase, an increase of Christ. He must increase. I must decrease. And so, <clears throat> so that's what we're doing. We're not just having a class. We're not just studying the Bible and these things. We are asking the Holy Spirit, make me want him in this spirit. Let Make me, bring me to a place where I want this Jesus and, and yes, that goes against all your ambitions and all this and that. But let me tell you, the Lord's plan for his son is so much greater than what you could ever imagine. So much greater. And then besides, it would be the father's plan for his son in you. And through all of that, you get to be with the, with the father through the son. Through all of that. It, how, how do you put a price on that? How do you even explain it so that you could understand the price? You can't. I mean, you really can't. You just hope the Holy Spirit bears witness first. You know what I mean? The Holy Spirit's bear, bearing witness. When he does, then we go, okay, I don't know that I agree with everything. I don't know if I understand everything, but something in me is bearing witness. So if that's you, Lord, <laughs> then have at it. You see what I mean? then that, that becomes the spirit in which we're, we're going forward. <clears throat> so, um, you know, in a certain sense, I'm still barely starting into this, but I think I'd like to just have a little bit of prayer time. We don't have to go long, and I do, I do have a meeting with some of you um, tonight in my office afterwards, so I'm going to have to quit a little bit early. But I think... I think the Spirit of God is wanting to move a little bit on us. So let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we're not here for class, and we're not here just to, to learn deep things. We want to break with our understanding, and we want to break with our way of seeing things, and we want to break with things that are contrary to your heart and mind. And we not only want to break with it, in other words, we not only want to put off all bitterness and wrath and everything, but we want to put on tenderheartedness. We want to put on these things that are Christ in us, that are, that are only possible through him, through his spirit and through his nature. And so we're, <clears throat> we, we come, Father, like empty vessels saying, pour into us. We come as those who are... Uh, Broken but not broken. We are, we are broken enough to say yes, Lord, to you right this minute. But we're not broken enough for you to be able to fully manifest that in us. So we say do the work. Do the work. Do the work. And do it in our heart and mind, and Father, and, and show, us, uh, show us Saul of Tarsus in our minds as we wrestle and we hear his thoughts and they're bitter or they're angry or they're, they, they're maybe even threatening or whatever, um, slaughter, <clears throat> that that show us that that is not life. That's not coming from you. That's not a protection from you. That's us trying to hold our ground uh, uh, without going to the cross, Father, and to be with you without the cross. and. So we want you to explain it and give your definitions because everything I say really has no power unless you breathe on it or unless you 
um, bear witness to it. But beyond what I say, in this, these times that we gather, let your spirit speak of Jesus. That's why, Jesus, you said he was going to come. Holy Spirit, speak of Jesus to us, not just in these gatherings, but in, in our day and in our nights and in our work and in our free time. Speak of Jesus to us, the Jesus that you've known before the world was, the Jesus you knew apart from a Savior before there was anyone to save or anyone to heal. Speak of the eternal Jesus and let him be, find a home in us. May we be his temple and his place of rest. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we will take a little break, and then uh, Kelly will come back for her class. Um, and um, then I do need to meet with a few of you.